Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. And once again we find ourselves looking for stories in a new subreddit. This one is a subreddit called Advice. This one's from user throwaway32148328284. How do I make my toddler afraid of someone? By the title, this probably sounds bad. It isn't, I promise you. A little background. I was assaulted when I was 17 and I became pregnant. My abuser has stalked me since he found out I was pregnant. My daughter is two and a half now and we've had to move four times since she was born to stay away from him. I have an active restraining order against him, but it hasn't stopped him once and the police have not been very diligent. In their eyes, he is just trying to see his daughter and they turned a blind eye, despite them being called multiple times because mine and my daughter's life were in danger after he broke into my home. Yes, this has happened more than once. I work a full-time job to ensure my daughter and I have a place to live and because I have no help from family, my daughter goes to daycare. The daycare is fully aware of the active restraining order and have a photo of him on file. She showed up to her daycare last week and I have been too afraid to send her back this week and have taken off work. But if I want to pay my rent next month, I have to go back to work tomorrow. I trust my daycare. They recognized him immediately, called the police, who didn't do anything because he wasn't on the premises when they arrived, and then called me. So I know deep down that I can trust these people to protect my child and alert me if he shows up again, but I am still so scared. I don't know if this is the right thing to do, but I want my daughter to recognize him and be afraid of him. I want her to know to make noise and yell, scream and cry if he is around so that hopefully, if something were to happen, somebody would notice that something is wrong. How can I go about doing this? Is this the right thing to do? Well, this is a horrible position for OP to be in. It really sucks that the police isn't doing anything about this, or they can't do anything about this. We don't know much, we don't have much information, but they should be able to enforce the restraining order, right? So the question I have for you is, given the situation, do you think OP is on the right path in how to confront this thing, how to get her daughter to be safe, by using fear against this horrible person? Let me know what you think in the comment section, and in the meantime, let's go over the community comments to see what kind of advice OP got. Ah, Fraggle says, I would suggest contacting your local battered women's shelter. They will be able to give you a lot of much needed resources and can be a powerful ally in getting your real protection and ending this stalking. Karen Video Editor says, That's difficult, tricky and possibly traumatic. It's important that you get to a place where you trust the people caring for her. Though I can't even imagine how terrifying this ordeal must be for you. My heart goes out to you. Now that the police have been called to the scene when he was there, they'll be familiar with him if it happens again, which is good. Do they have security cameras? If he tried to approach her and there's an active restraining order, were you able to file charges with the police? OP responds, I have reported multiple times with the police over him breaking the restraining order. They have yet to do anything because he isn't there when they arrive. I've had to wait three hours for them before. He's a friend to a few of the officers and they have it in their head that he is just trying to see his child and I am preventing that despite the restraining order. He forcibly broke into my apartment and because there are no camera proving it was him, they won't arrest him. There are cameras at the daycare, but the police didn't bother asking for the footage, just showed up and left since he wasn't there. Peppermint Death says, You can set up a safe word with your daughter. Have her decide on one random word that she will remember. Whoever is there to see her or pick her up has to know what that word is. If that person shows up to take her, he wouldn't know the word. And in theory, she won't go with him. Tell boogeyman stories. My parents made me scared of strangers really early on by scaring me. But honestly, it will be hard to make her afraid of him until she is older. She won't understand right now, which makes it a lot more difficult. OP responds, she doesn't have great speech. Nothing I've done wrong according to her doctor, but she is just beginning to put together sentences. I don't know if I can get her to understand the concept of a safe word yet, though I have considered it. OP's edit, 
I have gotten some great advice, thanks to many people who replied, I am working with an organization who is going to help me move far away, possibly even before the end of this week. Thank you so, so much. Okay, well, apparently the community came through for OP and gave her proper advice because in that edit, she sounds very optimistic about what's about to come. This whole thing with the police and this guy being kind of friendly with some officers, is really sucky and it's not helping OP at all, it's just stressing her more, so it's a good thing that the advice she got is positive. And regarding the safe word advice, it is good advice, but a two and a half year old is still too small to actually be able to do that, and like OP says, she still has a little bit of a speech problem. Hopefully she'll get over it soon and when she's a little bit older, they can have a safe word in case anything happens. In any case, we need to move on to the update to see what happened next, so let's continue with that. Guys, first of all, thank you. I can't say that enough. Thanks to so many of you who commented different organizations who could help my daughter and I. We are now safe. I got in touch with a few organizations and one of them was able to get my daughter and I on a plane on Christmas Eve. I left our things, with the exception of whatever we could fit in two suitcases, and left without saying a word. We arrived that night and some amazing people from the organization were there to pick us up and take us to housing. We can stay here for up to 18 months, but I totally plan on getting on my feet before then. They have childcare, connections to lawyers, psychologists, everything we need. They had an apartment ready for us, with a Christmas tree and everything. They had presents for my daughter to open on Christmas morning and even a couple for me as well. We have now been here for six nights and for the first time since my daughter was born, I have had a full night's rest. I have talked to a lawyer who is helping me get an order of protection so that if we were ever found, I know I will be protected by the law. I feel like I can do anything. I can go to school. I can get whatever job I want. I can spend time with my daughter without being in fear. This is such a blessing. I feel like I can live my life. For the past two and a half years, I have been stuck in the mindset that to protect my daughter and myself, I couldn't act young. It was work and home every single day. Getting to separate myself from my terrible situation made me realize that I can be a responsible mother for my daughter and be 20 years old. I get to enjoy being a young parent. It doesn't have to be so scary. So once again, thank you to everyone who helped. I wish I could hug every single one of you in person. I am eternally grateful. And so I don't break any rules of the subreddit. Any advice for a young mom in a new city? OP, first of all, good for you and congratulations on moving away from that terrible, terrible situation that you've been living for the past two and a half years, if not more. Whatever organization it was that helped you, it's a good thing you kept it anonymous, they did a great job and they were so nice to get you on a plane, move you away, have a place for you to stay for 18 months while you can do whatever you want and start living your life. You are young, you're 20 years old, there is so much you can do. I am very happy and excited for you for this future that you've been given now. As for the rest of us, OP did ask a question at the end of this update, so how about we continue with what recommendations she got for a young mom in a new city. Sheriff of Nothing Town says, that's fantastic. Just in case the organization that's helping you hadn't mentioned this, if you have an unusual name, it might be worth going by a more common nickname for anything that touches the internet for a while. Once you feel up to it, do a couple web searches as if you were trying to find someone with the name the abuser knew you by. Based on how many other people online use that same name, you can then decide whether you'd be difficult enough to find if you keep using it as you start doing more public activities like work, civic involvement, making new friends and joining them in various online groups, etc. OP responds, The benefit to having Catholic parents in this situation is that they pick their baby names right out of the Bible. I knew four girls in the church with the same name as me. I will be working to try and change mine and my daughter's last names though. Kayo thinks says, Advice. If you have childcare, please, please, please try to use some of your time to just do a thing that you like. You can love your kid more than anything in the world, but having a hobby or a club that you do by yourself is a way of loving yourself too, and it's a great way to meet people. Ruby Tuesday says, Proud of you. 
Reddit can be anonymous, but stay off of other social media so you can't be followed. In a new city, look for fun local stuff, museums, parks, activities unique to the area. Maybe look for a group of other young mothers and kids. Also, may I gently suggest looking for a support group for abuse survivors? You seem like you are full of optimism and hope, and things have greatly improved for you. Just in case you need someone to talk to or have any unresolved issues. Best of luck to you. Alright, everybody's happy and they're giving good pieces of advice for OP to do in the new city. However, I do think that the most important point of this part is what OP said about trying to change the last name. Yes, OP, if you can do that, then definitely go and do that. That would be a really good way to stay in hiding and avoid of this guy to come near you or even try to find you. So now OP, I wish you and your daughter all the best for 2021 and may this year and the rest be a fantastic future for you guys. And so we've reached the end of the video. I truly hope you guys liked it. If you did, go ahead and click like. Of course, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Also, here are more videos from my channel that you might enjoy. And having said all that, I will see you guys on the next video.